Good morning, and welcome to our video devotion for Tuesday, August the 17th, 2021. Hope that you're having a happy, healthy, blessed day. As we get started this morning in our Bible studies, I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. That's Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. Be on your guard. This is a very strong statement in the original Greek language of the New Testament. It carries the idea of an urgent warning concerning an imminent danger or threat. It's, it's kind of like what happens when, when a weather person comes on television breaking into regularly scheduled programming with a tornado warning. You probably need to listen to what they've got to say. Well, in this case, Jesus' warning is to be on guard against the yeast of the Pharisees. So what does that mean? Well, let me try to explain it. Yeast is a type of fungus that's mixed into bread dough to make it ferment and begin to rise. Now, the amazing thing about yeast is it only takes just a small amount to ferment a very large loaf of bread dough. Now, because of this unique quality, yeast was used by rabbis in Jesus' day to illustrate the corrupting influence of sin in a person's life. In other words, just like a little bit of yeast can penetrate a large amount of dough, once sin enters a person's heart, it quickly spreads to influence your entire life. James 1, 14 through 15 puts it this way. Each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Okay, that's what a warning about yeast usually means. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. He says, be very careful about living your life under the teaching and influence of the Pharisees. You know, as Christians, we're, we're so accustomed to seeing and thinking of the Pharisees in a negative light. I mean, after all, the Gospels proclaim the Pharisees as being openly hostile to Jesus. Jesus also had many negative things to say about the Pharisees. So we tend to think of them as the bad guys. But in Jesus' day, the Pharisees were the good guys. They were leaders in their community. They were men who were worthy of honor and respect. When a rabbi, when a Pharisee walked by, people would say, there goes a real man of God. And yet Jesus says, don't be influenced by the yeast of the Pharisees. So what was it about the Pharisees that made their lifestyle so dangerous? Well, the answer is right there in verse 1. Hypocrisy. Now here's where we have to be very careful when we, to understand what Jesus meant when he talked about the yeast of the Pharisees. Today, hypocrisy means a pretense of piety or, or moral superiority. A person who talks to talk but doesn't necessarily walk the walk. But that's not what hypocrisy meant in, the, by, by, in biblical times. In Jesus' day, a hypocrite was an actor playing a part. In Greek theater, an actor might have to play seven or eight different roles in a play. So to avoid confusion, the actor would wear, always wear a mask. And the mask did two things. First, it helped the audience identify the character's emotions and two, it concealed the actor's true identity. So look at what Jesus is saying here in verse 2. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Here's the point Jesus is making. When you look at the Pharisees, you are looking at the mask they present to the outside world. But don't fall in the influence of these men because they're, what they're doing is something that is spiritually dangerous. So what was it about the teaching of the Pharisees that was so dangerous? It's very simple. They were so concerned with doing the right thing 
They forgot about the main thing. See, the Pharisees thought that the way you got right with God was through human effort. And they were obsessive about that effort. They focused all their attention on strict adherence to the religious laws and all the duties that the Jewish faith demanded. This is what Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 20, chapter 23, verses 23 through 33. Listen to what Jesus says here. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin. But you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides. You strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee. First clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead man's bones and everything unclean. In the same way on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the, full, the measure of the sin in your life, of your forefathers. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? <laughs> you know, last week we uh, I did a couple of devotions about what to do when the preacher steps on your toes. <laughs> Jesus was stepping on the toes of his listeners with that, with that, with that uh, sermon here. Well, what was his point? Well, the Pharisees might have gotten their external stuff right, but they had no living personal relationship with God. Tragically, the yeast of the Pharisees is still around today. A lot of people think that you have to follow certain rules and regulations to get right with God. They don't understand that God is love. They see Him as a brutal tyrant, ready to zap them into the fires of hell for the slightest indiscretion. And you know what? People like that make great church members. They really do. I mean, they're always at church. They never miss giving their tithes and offerings. They serve on church committees. They go on volunteer mission projects. They sing in the choir and teach Sunday school. And yet for all the things that they do, they're really just actors wearing a mask. They're like the Pharisees. They've got all the externals right, but they've missed the main thing. And what is the main thing? The main thing is to understand at a very deep and personal level that God loves you unconditionally. That He sent Jesus, His one and only Son, to die on the cross for your sin. And that by simply accepting God's gift of grace, you will be saved. You will be made right with Him. Let me tell you something. That's not the main thing. That's everything. See, in their hypocrisy, the Pharisees worshiped God. They respected God. They feared God. But they didn't love Him because they did not know Him as love. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 7-9, through 9, the Bible says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You know, it's interesting. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is having a conversation with the, with, with the Pharisees when one of them asks Him, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? It's a perfect Pharisee question. What do we have to do to please God? What law should we really focus on? But Jesus doesn't answer that question. Instead, He jumps right back 
to the main thing. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. You see, until the heart is right, until that love thing is right with God, nothing will ever be right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we rejoice in knowing that we are loved by You. And we pray that Your love will fill us to overflowing, that we will feel Your compassion, Your mercy, Your grace, Your forgiveness, that we will always know that we are Your dear children, bought with a price, the price of Jesus' own life on the cross. Father, help us to love You in return with all of our heart, with all of our spirit, with all of our mind, with all of our being. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me for today's devotion. I hope that you're planning to be here at church tomorrow evening, beginning at 7 p.m. We're still studying Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. We also have our youth and our mission kids activities going on, so come on out and join us tomorrow. I also hope that you'll join us for Thursday morning's devotion. Until then, I love you and I pray for you. Bye-bye.